You notice I mentioned it several times in this video, aesthetic satisfaction level or the threshold of satisfaction or the threshold of aesthetics. When discussing three-dimensional scar treatment and wear and tear, there needs to be a conversation that gives perspective into aesthetics. These types of cosmetic concerns are not the same as someone coming to me with acne. And the reason they're not is because there's nothing medical going on at the moment. There's no inflammation, there's no infection, and there's nothing that if nothing's done, it will get worse, except for possibly the mood, which is why we're talking cosmetics and satisfaction. So let's make it very clear. When someone has acne or activity, they have a medical problem. Inflammation, possible infection, and activity, they have symptoms, they can feel it. Those are medical problems. When someone is talking about just three-dimensional scarring, proven inactivity, and just three-dimensional scarring, this is a cosmetic issue. The difference between the two is one has a time sensitivity. If acne is not treated quickly, it will create more scarring and it will create more damage and can get, become a worse case. If three-dimensional scarring is not treated or just allows time to soften it up, there is no urgency. You could wait as long as you want to discuss your three-dimensional scars or never discuss them at all and everything's cool based on your level of satisfaction. So this is a very important conversation. Three-dimensional scarring is not a disease. It is the wear and tear from prior inflammation. Regardless whether you pop your pimples or don't pop your pimples, those with chronic acne will likely see some degree of wear and tear. If it's really small and the, and the marks and the scars are so tiny, we just call it a little bit of wear and tear. If they're starting to get grooves and they have some holes and they have some bigger chunks taken out of their flesh, that's more wear and tear. For me, I work more with the emotional reactions to wear and tear, so for me, it's all wear and tear. I think when I call it wear and tear, it helps distinguish it from any type of disease. It's the wear and tear from a prior disease. All right, we got that point across. Now. There's another concept I'm alluding to in this video that we will further discuss in future videos, and that is the concept of aesthetics. You can't talk about three-dimensional scarring without talking about aesthetic satisfaction in general. Now what's tricky is that aesthetic satisfaction, when someone looks in the mirror, looks at themselves in the photo, or, or, or the way you know, they feel people are responding to them, this is not this art of aesthetics is not just based on the skin. So what I often see, I'll give you an example of something I often see. I've met many people who are complaining to me about the three-dimensional scarring on their jaw or their neck. But when I look at them, I see they're also very much overweight and their jaw, their jowls and their neck are softer than say a professional athlete because they're out of shape. Their complaint is the scars because you, they see them and they attribute their lack of aesthetic satisfaction to the three-dimensional scars alone. What I sometimes tell them while we're working on the scars, if you want to make that area of your face look better, neck, especially the neck and the jawline and the, and the lower cheeks, if you want to make that area look better, get an incredible fitness, get in incredible shape. If you look at many professional boxers, their faces have tons of wear and tear, not to, partially from acne oftentimes, and also from getting their faces beat to hell for 10 to 20 years. Why is it they aesthetically oftentimes look good? Like if you look at Floyd Mayweather, or if you look at Miguel Cotto, or if you look at Manny Pacquiao, you'll see they kind of look good. They have a nice aesthetic. Why is that? Not that their skin is, is bad, but if you were to get up close to any of these boxers, you'll probably see that they've taken some wear and tear. So why do they look so good? Ask yourself the question, why do these athletes who are taking kicks to the face in the World Cup soccer, um, the skiers who are taking frostbite every day, taking all kinds of inflammatory wear and tear, the surfers who are taking sun blazing on their face and sunburns for a lifetime, why do they still look aesthetically good? Why does Kelly Slater still look so good? He's got a little bit of wear and tear from 30 years of the sun baking his face and he probably has some acne and it doesn't matter, he looks incredible. Why does he look so good? There are many reasons, but the point of this video is that skin is not the only contributor to aesthetics. 
these athletes look great partially because they're in incredible fitness and that fitness does go into your face. Not everyone knows this as a given. For me, it's a given. If you are ultra fit, your face will look more ultra fit. If you've been unfit for 20 years and then you get ultra fit, you might have a little bit of wear and tear, sagging skin type wear and tear. However, the muscles of your face and all these, you know, all these muscles of your face and the skin that, sur that tightly surrounds those muscles, they change when you get fit. So I think it's an important, if anyone ever comes to me with three-dimensional scarring, I think it's an important conversation to have right off the bat. You know, you can make your face look more aesthetic by getting in great shape. It's just, it's a side point that I think needs to be addressed because people are so focused on their scars and they look so close at them that they don't see the big picture. Similar to the forest and the trees analogy where you're looking really close at one tree, you're not even seeing the full forest. That's what happens sometimes when people perceive their face differently in the conversation of three-dimensional scars is they will come up to me and say, this one scar is driving me crazy. And I zoom them back out and say, how's your overall aesthetic? What's going on? What do you want to change? What do you want to make more to represent? What do you want to change to represent the way you feel? Or what do you want to change to look more aesthetic as far as what you're looking for? What's your you know, threshold of satisfaction? Not how are we going to fix that one scar and spend thousands of dollars fighting that one scar. How are we going to fix the overall aesthetic? There are many other aspects to aesthetics as well, besides the fitness of the face. One more concept when it comes to three-dimensional scars is very important, and that's the concept of grieving over prior accidents. If you were to go through a plate glass window or through the windshield of a car, and you were to get scarred up from this accident, there would be a grieving process. First you would get sewn back together, then you would go home and heal physically, and then you would look in the mirror and see you got scarred up. And then you'd have to realize, you know, oh, I got into an accident. I got into a car accident. Um, I forgive myself or I forgive the other person that made a mistake or whatever it is. I, you have to then grieve over the accident. You went through a plate glass window. There's going to have to be some emotional grieving to the trauma that has taken place. The same traumatic grieving needs to happen if you've been three-dimensionally scarred from acne. What you may not realize is that you've been traumatized either acutely in a, in a very bad single breakout or chronically over many years, you have been traumatized. Now, this is not under interpretation. It is traumatic to be covered in inflammation and the pain of nodules and the discomfort of having lumps on your face. That is a traumatic event for anyone. I'd like to put emphasis on this conversation of if you have three-dimensional scars and you are, they're driving you crazy, it's possible you haven't grieved yet over the original car accident. And here's the car accident. You had inflammatory process on your face, whether it was conscious or unconscious to you, whether you were too young to know what was going on or you were very much aware and was driving you crazy under poor treatment. Either way, you've been traumatized and now it's time to grieve. And this is why we do this. Because number one, acne is a scarring condition it does take away flesh and replace it with scar tissue. Let me, let me repeat that. Acne is and is known to be a scarring condition. It does take away flesh and replace it sometimes with scar tissue. Now there's no getting back to your original tissue from scar tissue. However, there is softening of scar tissue, sometimes even excising of scar tissue to put the two normal pieces of flesh back together. That's again more invasive procedures. But there's many clever things you can do to scar tissue to make it look aesthetic, to make it achieve the aesthetic threshold, the one that makes you satisfied. Um, so today, if you're here with three-dimensional scars, just do it with me. Let's today grieve 
over the trauma that has occurred on your face or body. If you have hypertrophic scars or keloids, let's today grieve over the fact that we got traumatized and that it then healed with fibrous tissue or that it healed with a piece of flesh missing. Whatever it is, there was an accident that happened. It was an inflammation. It's no one's fault. It's part of humanity. Everyone takes some sort of wear and tear at some time in their life. Even if they just get one sunburn, you're taking a beating a little bit. But um, it's important that you grieve over the traumatic event or events or years of trauma. Once you grieve, we can extract emotion from a cosmetic issue, which is what scarring is. It's no longer a medical issue. It's a cosmetic issue. So let's take a moment today to grieve. It's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry that for the last five years you've been ravaged by active acne and now you're left with the wear and tear from what has always been known to be a scarring condition. It's okay. Some people actually do fly through the windshields of cars and at some point they need to grieve over that accident. So let's make this the point where we grieve over the traumatic inflammation that has gone on on your face or body. Take a moment. I used to do this exercise in the office with my patients and many of them who had never grieved or never cried about their acne ever let it out. And they allowed themselves to, for the first time, grieve over not having been in control of their skin, not having been in control of their body, and having this very destructive inflammatory process go on. And once they were able to cry and grieve and let it all out, I got their focus back. Now we can focus on, the, on softening the scars. We're not going to remove your scars. We're going to soften them to make them aesthetically pleasing. And I would recommend you get into shape, ultra fitness, to make your face even more aesthetically pleasing. Get your body in tight shape and the scars in the body look better too. All this comes from an unemotional place. The cosmetic world should be an unemotional place. After a decade of practicing medicine, I believe that this grieving process is critical for patients and clients to really focus and then begin to make goals and take on their life. So I hope, and I hope this video helped you grieve over a traumatic event that you may not have grieved over. You can tell from this video that in the treatment of skin care, you're both treating the skin with both weaponry and, and skillful hand skills. And also, you need to have a conversation so that you treat the emotions. After seeing these relationships between the emotion and the skin and the skills and the products, you'll, you'll understand why, why I created the acne practice and not the acne product. Acne products being sold to unsuspecting people who have emotional reactions to their skin can do damage to many people who are not aware of their own emotional reactions. This is the reason why Acne Boot Camp and the Acne Practice is an all or nothing comprehensive program because we're going to be taking care of people and addressing them as a whole. Thanks. I'll be here if you need me. Talk to you guys soon.